Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are just getting started. We'll give it a minute for folks to enter the room and or enter the meeting. And we will get started in just a minute. If you have a moment and you're able to, it would be great if people could uh, pop into the chat and just let us know where you're coming from. Uh, put your organization into the chat and we can see who is here and on the line. Just getting a few more people. We'll start in a minute. We have a large group joining us today for everyone's reference. We have over 80 registrants for this stakeholder meeting. So I'm just getting all of, giving folks a moment to be in there. Okay. And everyone should be able to see my screen right now. Any challenges? No, we're good. Great, getting the thumbs up. Welcome all. And as people join, I was just noting, please put you in the chat, just let us know where you're joining us from. Okay. So as a note, we are recording this session. As you join in, you should have gotten a warning, but just a indication to everyone, this will be recorded and we will be able to share links after the meeting. So it's 12.04 now. I'm actually going to get started in the interest of time, recognizing that everyone is joining us during their, during their day, their work day. So um, we'll, we'll get started. And I would like to start just by introducing myself. My name is Marilise Willemsey, and I am from Dillon Consulting. And I'm part of the team helping the city deliver the engagement consultation program for our plan Toronto, for the city's official plan review. And I'll be facilitating today. I'll also be part of the documentation and the record keeping for the entire consultation program for this project. So I'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. City of Toronto acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. The city also acknowledges that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. Indigenous perspectives are an important part of this official plan review, and we'll speak to more of the Indigenous engagement later on in this project. So some quick introductions. I'm not going to, given the size of the group today, uh, I'm not going to go through everyone, everyone who's on the call, but I want to let you know who is here. So we have the team from city planning that is responsible for the official plan as a whole, and they're considered our, our official plan experts. We also have subject matter experts who are responsible for our focused component today, which is environment and climate change. So the team that's um, carrying forward the recommendations related to environment and climate change policies in the OP is here, as well as the overall arching, overarching city planning team. We have the consultation team, which includes myself, as well as others from Dillon Consulting that are helping us document and record, and then all of you, stakeholders. So as I said, we're seeing lots of people pop into the chat here to uh, let everyone know where you're from. I do want to acknowledge that it is our intention to get up, uh, I'm hoping this week, on the city's website for this project, a list of all the stakeholders that are involved in the consultation or that we've reached out to part, as part of this program, just so that people can see uh, the broad reach of conversations. And also if there's recommendations to, to include others, that we could get those. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, Please stay muted when you are not talking. So there will be parts of this meeting today where we're gonna open it up for discussion and you'll use the raise hand function or the chat box. Um, we'll, we do have the ability to mute you if we hear some background noise, um, but generally please keep yourself on mute. If you have a question or a comment during the discussion period, you can use the raised hand function or you can type your question or comment into the chat box. 
we will be using that chat box actively. If you would like everyone to see your comment or question, please make sure it's addressed to everyone in the chat box. You can also address your question or comment to someone specific. Um, one thing that I want everyone to know is because we have enough or quite a few staff members from the city on here, they are in the background trying to answer as much as they can through the chat. So if we don't have the chance to get to everyone, you can put your question in there and hopefully a team member will respond to you uh, in there. If you don't get it right away, we'll follow up uh, with further record and response to questions we couldn't get to during this hour and a half meeting. So there will be the dedicated points of, of discussion. We do ask that you introduce yourself when we call on you, just so folks know where you're coming from. We will be using polls and we will have breakout rooms for at least half an hour today to have more detailed discussions with everyone. As I said, the meeting is being recorded and I did mention myself as the facilitator. It is also my responsibility to take forward the input we hear from all of you today and make sure that it's shared with the city team that is drafting all of this work so that they have a full understanding of the perspectives from stakeholders. So, getting right into our meeting today and the purpose. This is all around setting expectations and getting, uh, getting clarity on expectations, both from stakeholders, as well as the city providing clarity on the expectations of what the official plan review is all about. Today, we wanna to hear from stakeholders on expectations for what the city needs to achieve for 2051, as it relates to environment and climate change. So in a moment, I'll just go through the engagement um, plan and process. But one of the things you should have all received is that there are multiple meetings that we're having that are subject matter focused. Today is environment and climate change. We recognize that particularly in the environment and climate change uh, area topic, it overlaps with many things. It overlaps with housing, with intensification and with transit. So we anticipate to hear uh, a cross pollination of information, but we do want it centered on environment and climate change. If you have more input on affordable housing or other subject matter, we encourage you to come to the subsequent meetings that are focused on those topics. So our agenda today, we're going to provide an update just on where we are in the process. We will reflect on what we've heard so far. So many of you are at our first stakeholder meeting uh, in the spring in May of 2021. So we wanna reflect on that as well as some other meetings that we've been having, more targeted meetings with different audiences for you to hear what's been said so far. The city will then do a little presentation to provide some clarity on what the OP policies do now, what they need to do in relation to policy conformity, so conforming with the provincial requirements, and then also what's being considered beyond the conformity piece. What is the city looking at uh, in terms of their review and their update that's not just related to the conformity part? And then we listen. The, the, the last half is really around listening, having the stakeholders give, it, give their opinions and their perspectives for the city to hear. I do encourage, encourage you, I've put up here the uh, email address for this project, opreview at toronto.ca. If you do not get an opportunity to share what you would like to today, or more comes to mind after this meeting for the reflection, please submit written comments to opreview at toronto.ca. So an update on where we are right now. Many of you may have seen this already. So program for the official plan review is in three parts. There's part one, which is really the introduction, the launch, making sure people know that this is happening and what it's all about, and talking about what people want Toronto to be in 2051 from a big picture perspective. That started in May and is run all through the summer. We're now commencing and beginning the part two, which is diving into some very big and specific questions that the city needs uh, intel on from all of the stakeholders, from all the public on where to go with the big issues for Toronto for 2051. And then that will lead into the drafting of the of the policies, of the revised policies and any recommendations that the city has for the direction of the official plan. That will we'll further consult on the, that draft or those policies in the new year. So the intel we get now will help the city in the initial work towards those draft policies, and then we'll come forward and consult on that again. There are many avenues for consultation on this project. The stakeholder meetings are only kind of one area through which we are um, reaching out and, and contacting others and working with others. I won't go through the big long list, but if you're interested in finding out more, you can always reach out to us and we can, we can give you more information. 
So as I said, phase one was co commenced in May 2021 of the for the engagement program. We had initial meetings with both internal and external stakeholders. So many of the folks on the call today, we would consider the external folks or external stakeholders because they're not within divisions and departments of the city. There are though um, some internal stakeholders here today, and we have had targeted meetings with the internal interdivisional interdepartment conversations to, to make sure that all the things that people are talking about across different divisions are coordinated and that there's an understanding of the direction everyone is heading. We've had meetings with organizations and community leaders. We've had meetings with Indigenous rights holders, and we continue to, to build our Indigenous outreach and engagement program. In terms of public consultation, we are gearing up for our first public meeting on October 20th. You may have seen an announcement about that, but we've had a public poll launch, a video launch, and then encouraging as much as possible through various outreach and, and communications tools to get people to the website to learn more about this project and what it's all about. Um, the city's also, the chief planner and the deputy city mayor were on an agenda episode uh, with Steve Pakin to further increase the reach and understanding of this project. So now we're in phase two. And as I said, today's focus is environment and climate change. We do encourage you to come to the public meeting on the 20th. We think it's important that everyone hear the broad range of perspectives that are at the table, both across stakeholders, but also within the public domain. So we encourage you, if you can, to come to one of those. So I'm going to first find out, I'm gonna launch a poll right now. And in this, we really wanna understand if you have a bit of a background already on this project. So. I'm going to launch this now, opening the poll. And the question is, have you been to a previous public meeting for our plan Toronto? Yes or no? I'll give you a moment to fill that in now, and that will just help the city understand kind of the context of how much information we need to give. I'll give you a moment more. If you don't know where the polling is, it should show up on the right hand side, right column where your chat is. There should be a polling option down there that you can open up. Okay. I'm gonna close the poll now. I recognize maybe not everyone's had a chance to answer, but we've got over half of the participants have answered so far. So Got a few seconds remaining. Okay. So I'll publish these results, but ultimately it looks like uh, less than half have been to a previous meeting. So that's good context for Kyle and uh, and Jane in your presentations around what information to provide. So Kyle, I'm gonna hand it over to you now. For those folks who have missed a previous meeting and this is your first on our plan Toronto, I will give you a brief overview of what you need to know. Great, thanks Marilise. And uh, good morning everyone and thanks for coming today. Uh, my name is Kyle Farron. I'm a senior planner uh, with the city's official plan team, and uh, I'm working on this official plan review with Jeff and the rest of the team. Um, so to start, uh, I'm just going to give you a very high level overview about this process. So if you do have questions, um, please don't hesitate to follow up with us after. Um, like Marilee said, you can reach us at our uh, project email. It's opreview at toronto.ca. And if you need to find that on Google, you can just Google official plan review Toronto, and it'll take you to our project page that has the contact information on it. Um, and so just to start uh, and tell you a little bit about Toronto's official plan, and Marilise, could we, um, oh, perfect, we're already on the right side. Um, the official plan is Toronto's roadmap for land use. So it sets the long-term vision, it reflects our shared values, and all of that takes the form of policies that will help guide decision-making on how we use land. Um, but it also touches on a lot of other important areas like economic growth and the environment. Um, and so with that, it's important to keep the plan up to date. Um, and we are also mandated by the province to do that. Um, so we know that, and as you can see on this slide, over the next 30 years, 
Toronto is going to grow uh, by at least 700,000 people and 450,000 jobs. And uh, it's, I think, important to note here that these are minimum numbers that come from the province. Um, our process, the Our Plan Toronto process that we're here to talk about today, is about focusing on how we grow. So identifying where growth should go and what it should look like. Uh, next slide, please, Marilis. So there's a lot of information here, so I'll just try and keep it sort of high level. So there are a few things that we know about how we're going to grow, and the main one here is the provincial requirements. Um, so we know, for example, that we need to plan to 2051, out 30 years. Um, we know that we need to accommodate at least 700,000 more people. And we know that we have to accommodate at least 450,000 more jobs. You know, this doesn't stop us from planning more. Uh, we just need to show the province, uh, who is the final approval authority on the plan, um, that we can conform to their numbers. And so the city is doing its due diligence on that. And then on the right, uh, you can see a snippet from the council approved work plan uh, that was brought forward last May. Uh, and it kind of gives you a flavor of what we're looking at. So it's not just the provincial requirements, but there's a number of really important topics that we want to cover um, when we update the official plan. And that includes looking at the future of employment lands, for example, um, engaging indigenous groups and equity seeking groups. Um, and as you can also see on the far, far right is that climate change action is one of these items. And so the province mandates that we figure all of this out by uh, July of 2022, so next summer. And so our work plan is working toward that date. And so again, just to emphasize really the, the takeaway here is we're looking at how we grow in the city. Um, next slide, please, Marilise. Awesome. Uh, and so this slide is uh, just a few questions to prompt your thinking on, on big issues like equity, like climate change, like the environment. Um, some of those questions are, how do we balance growth with a healthy environment? Uh, how do we address climate change as we grow? And how can we address some of today's issues with growth? How can growth help? So there's lots to consider there um, as we move forward in preparing to update the official plan. Um, so I'll leave you with that and pass it back to Meryl Lees. Great. Thanks, Kyle. Okay, so I'll give a brief overview of what we've heard so far, and then we're gonna pause at, uh, after I've, I've one, run through that. We wanna make sure that we're covering the, the big key issues. So this isn't the details yet. We're gonna go into the breakout rooms to have the detailed conversations about what should actually be covered under those big issues. But I do wanna make sure that at, at an initial glance, you, there's some consensus around what some of the big issues are under the environment and climate change lens for official plan review and update. So in the phase one conversations, we really focused on kind of three main questions. What do you want Toronto to be in 2051? What are the big challenges facing Toronto as we grow? And what do you value most to be sustained or replicated? This first word cloud is uh, the, the compiled responses that we've received from public stakeholders, Indigenous conversations, and community leaders on this first question about what do you want Toronto to be in 2051? And as you can see, sustainable, green, uh, affordable, equitable, inclusive, walkable, accessible, vibrant, resilient, all of these are things that have been uh, um, raised the most. So the larger the word, the more we heard it. And there's also things that other people brought that by 2051, they may have a, a, a more of um, a concern-based focus of being underwater or being too expensive. And so we, we want to balance our conversations to both address the opportunity of the future, as well as those concerns that people have. Um, given this, this has also informed the conversations that we're having and how we've designed all these stakeholder meetings. Sustainable and green is the most kind of the, the top area of interest in conversation, hence why it's our first stakeholder meeting discussion. So the key themes of input that we heard, there was a number of cross-cutting elements that everything that was raised, um, some of these issues came up regularly, and those were equity and inclusion, relationship building, 
aligning priorities and conversations. That piece is about the fact that there are many efforts being made currently towards things like environment and climate change. And so making sure that those conversations are aligned. Community led solutions and learning from the past, as well as improving the implementation piece. In terms of the topic areas that all of that applied to, uh, the primary ones, so again, this is the highlight, but housing affordability, scale of intensification, environment and climate change, transit growth, business and economy, safety as it relates to both public safety and road safety, vision zero for any of those uh, on the line who know that, but also for women, black people, indigenous people, and people of color and public realm design as well in that conversation also about the supply and access to recreational space. So in that the big challenges, this is a summary. So I'm only just gonna read out the items on the left. We will be making slides available and sharing those with the stakeholder groups. So you can go through these with a finer comb than right now, but environment and climate change and sustainability. Housing supply related to access and affordability. So previously we've mentioned this, the affordability piece, but general housing stock as well. Of equity in terms of inclusivity, accessibility, and addressing discrimination as well as process. Healthy and resilient communities and building com complete communities throughout Toronto. We heard of many other things that you can see here summarized on the on the right hand side um, that that are further included in, in documentation if you'd like to look at that in detail. So so far we've really just summarized the environment and climate change conversations and input we've received to date has been environment and climate change, which is very big. So under that lens, let's get into detail. What the focus of conversation so far and interest has been around getting to net zero. Implementing climate goals, particularly related to transform to yo. Um, many of you on the line may actually be involved in some of the previous conversations that have occurred on transform to yo. If you haven't, we'll give a brief uh, update on what that project program is to, uh, to get you kind of understanding where things lie. Supporting the circular economy and waste reduction. Environmental equity, so how we address environmental concerns across the city from an equity lens. Network or, or implementing, achieving a network of sustainable transportation options, and that includes complete streets, as well as equitable, equitable access to those options so that there's complete streets across the city and across geographies. Policies for green buildings. So this is kind of the coordination or, or working with Toronto Green Standard and making sure that the official plan and the Toronto Green Standard are aligned in their intentions. Protection of and access to green spaces, parks and ravines. And the indigenous voice bringing forward and embedding the indigenous voice and roles in climate action and protection across the city. So as I said, just a brief note, pause here for folks to make sure you're aware of what these uh, references are that I've made. Transform TO is Toronto's ambitious climate action strategy. It includes goals, targets, and actions related to achieving a low carbon city and improving waste diversion to support a zero waste circular economy. Currently, the focus is on uh, preparing and approving the net zero strategy. So if you want to find out more, I've just got it right here, toronto.ca slash transform to you want to get some more info. Ying is also going to put that into the chat for folks to be able to access. The Toronto Green Standard sets out requirements for new development to achieve zero, zero emissions. So this is about buildings. It's private development uh, goals by 2030 and city owned facilities by 2022. Uh, including residential by 2026. The Toronto Green Standard sets out a pathway for new development to achieve zero emissions by 2030, and they advance the requirements that are included in it every four years. So that's just some context to understand how the conversation around environment and climate change in the official plan also needs to integrate with and consider what's being done for these other within these other um, domains that the city's responsible for and progressing. So in the Transform TO, there's been a, a number of consultation events and activities related to the Transform TO program. And most recently, uh, the focus on the net zero strategy, there has been a, there is an external advisory group, some of you may be on that, and there was a recent consultation. 
The focus of that consultation was on the 2030 targets and actions for the net zero strategy as they relate to buildings, energy, transportation, sustainable consumption, waste, and green space, decision-making and equitable engagement, so process and consultation. The critical element in terms of target that was discussed during Transform TO uh, conversations recently was on the, the target right now that is in the strategy that says by 2030, all new buildings are built to near net zero emissions. And the consultation with the advisory group included a lot of feedback. There's, there's much more than what you're seeing on this slide, but we pulled out the pieces of feedback from that engagement that relate to the official plan conversations and our conversation today, so that we can make sure we're integrating across all these, all these conversations. So in that discussion, there was feedback on needing to clearly define net zero goals, targets, and actions, needing to integrate with land use planning, and the Toronto Green Standards. So that's us, that's Trent Land Use Planning is the official plan. That's the interconnected issues that are related to buildings, energy, transportation, and achieving net zero. Engaging Indigenous communities in decision-making and the need for encouragement related to resources, education, incentives, consultation, the buy-in to the net zero strategy. Environmental equity, so considering uh, how those that are most impacted by hot buildings, flooding, and, and the challenges towards retrofitting and the affordability of retrofits. And then finally, there was also input around whether near net zero uh, language is enough. So wanting to give you that context, because in your breakout rooms, you may wanna build on this, you may wanna reiterate this and ask further questions. The wonderful thing about our breakout rooms today is that in every room, there is a subject matter expert who has been involved in these conversations on Transform TO and is also involved in the official plan policy update so that you can ask the questions and get the clarity. I'm going to pause here. And uh, this is a summary slide that just notes everything I just spoke to, so I won't go through it. But I do want to allow for any questions or commentary around these key themes. So high level, we will get into the details of how to achieve some of these things or what the city actually needs to do. But any comments people have around these high theme or these bigger themes, and if there's anything missing in the lens of environment and climate change. So you're welcome to put that into the chat. Any comments you have in the chat about these bigger issues? or raise your hand and I can unmute you. Your, you raise your hand by hovering your cursor over your name in the participants list, or across the bottom of your screen, you'll see a couple of dots and you can um, raise your hand there. I do wanna keep us going and give Jane an opportunity to present to all of you on where the city is going with the official plan review and what they're focused on. So I will turn it over to Jane now. And if there's more that comes up, we can, we'll, we'll get into the breakout rooms to have further, more deeper discussions, okay? So Jane, over to you. Great, thanks very much, Marilee. So my name is Jane Welsh. I'm the acting manager of the policy unit in city planning. And we've been, uh, myself and the team who is here today have been very involved both in the last update to the official plan around environment and climate change and also in the one going forward. So what we're gonna, do right now is just go over at a very high level what the official plan policies do now and what areas related to environment that we need to review to address conformity with provincial policy. Next slide. So the official plan envisions a city with, among other things, a healthy natural environment, including clean air, soil, energy, and water, infrastructure, and socioeconomic systems that are resilient to disruptions and climate change, and a connected system of natural features and ecological functions that support biodiversity and contribute to civic life. Most of the policies in the official plan relating to environment and climate change can be found in section 3.4, which is entitled the natural environment. And essentially they state that city building activities will be environmentally friendly based on minimizing pollution, protecting and restoring the natural ecosystem, supporting biodiversity, protecting and enhancing the urban forest, uh, reducing solid waste, reducing energy use, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and reliance on fossil fuels, reducing risk associated with hazard and promoting green infrastructure. 
The policies also encourage sustainable design and construction through green roofs, advancing energy conservation, and managing stormwater. The policies in Section 5 Five, enable securing of sustainable design features through the Toronto Green Standards. So we had to go back and amend the official plan in order to enable um, the requirements under the Toronto Green Standard. And these address the urban heat island impact, improve energy efficiency, manage stormwater, and restore natural areas. And also in Schedule 3, that gives us the ability to re require things as part of a complete application. And we require submission of an energy strategy, and that will identify opportunities for energy conservation and the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions for large developments. And then most recently, we added the requirement to submit a soil volume plan, which allows us to secure adequate soil for tree planting. Next slide. So what are we reviewing? Um, as stated earlier, the growth plan sets out a number of policies which municipal official plans must address. And the policies pertaining to environment are found in section 4.2 of the growth plan that's protecting what is valuable. And in that, they require the official plans to identify and protect key hydrologic features, which consist essentially of permanent and intermittent streams, inland lakes, areas like seepage areas and springs, and also wetlands, and also key hydrologic areas, which include significant groundwater recharge areas, highly vulnerable aquifers, and significant surface water contribution areas. Now, the Conservation Authority has already gone ahead and completed the mapping of these areas, as you can see in the slides here, and most of these key areas are actually already found within the Natural Heritage System mapping in the official plan. Uh, next slide. So critical area for review, and this was certainly evident in the conversations that we've had uh, so far, are the policies addressing climate change. As you may be aware, studies indicate the City of Toronto will experience m more extended heat waves and more extreme weather events in the future. This review um, is intended to ensure that the official plan continues to achieve our goals of commu complete communities, reducing dependence on cars, uh, addressing risk to infrastructure, and also about managing stormwater and extreme weather events, and protecting the natural heritage system and promoting food security. Next slide. Another key area um, for review in the growth plan was the idea was under section 4.2, which is a culture of conservation. And that is meaning about conserving water, including the efficient use and reuse of water, the conservation of energy for existing buildings and planned new developments, including opportunities to secure district energy. Uh, it's about improving improvements to air quality, including re the reduction of emissions. It's about integrated waste management, including promotion of building building conservation and adaptive reuse of buildings, and it's about the development of soil reuse strategies and best practices. You can see there's a lot that we've been uh, tasked to make sure that we've gone over in the official plan during this review. Next slide, please. And finally, um, last time around, we had a number of additional environmental sensitivity areas were identified or proposed to us that we should consider. And so we have reviewed those and we'll consider um, adding them through this exercise. And also the growth plan required municipalities to meet provincial intensification requirements for major transit stations. There's over 180 in Toronto. Six of them overlap with the green space system. And those proposed within the green space system will have lower targets to protect the natural areas. And that concludes uh, this very brief overview of what the official plan policies do now, what we're required to address, and what we plan to review. And uh, we're happy to take questions and really looking forward to the conversation to follow. Thank you, Jane. So we, I'm going to pause if there are any questions of clarification just on the uh, key elements that Jane presented. And then we're all going to go into our breakout rooms. There are about 60 participants, uh, stakeholders on the call today. So by going into the breakout rooms with an official plan team member and a subject matter expert on the climate change and environment policies, we'll be able to get 
make sure we hear from everyone on their input. So in terms of the overall group, any key questions right now in terms of what Jane has just presented about what they're looking at before we head into our breakout rooms. Again, you're welcome to raise your hand. You hover your cursor over the participants list and you'll see a hand raise or at the bottom of your screen or you can put it into the chat. Next moment. Okay. I think everyone's ready to head into breakout rooms and get into the details. So I will allow that to happen. So before we head, before we break out into the breakout rooms, I just want to uh, show people a few things that we will be doing. The question that we want to focus on is what are the big moves that the city needs to make in land use planning to advance on the following areas as we grow to 2051. Recognizing that land use planning piece is critical because of the role and function of an official plan. So getting to net zero, uh, resilience to heat waves and extreme temperatures, protection and enhancement of natural areas, green spaces and key hydrological areas, and any other elements that you think are relevant to the land use planning conversation that uh, the environmental and climate change policies should address. We will be using something called mural. So mural boards, every room will have a mural board. It's, it's like a virtual whiteboard if you haven't used it before. Um, links will be provided uh, in your chat rooms to the mural board for your uh, breakout room. So you can add things directly in to your mural board. And then also the Dylan team member will be documenting everything and sharing their screen so that you'll see you'll see what is happening. So um, I will allow Daniel to now go uh, send us into the breakout rooms. I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment, Daniel, and then we can all uh, head into those rooms. Just a moment. So I will, uh, I hope that was successful for everyone. I know our, our breakout room had uh, quite a lot of conversation and quite a lot of input, um, particularly from residents associations and business improvement uh, areas that are BIAs that are also um, active across the city. So some great perspectives there. Uh, I do want to encourage that the mural boards are still open. So you're more than welcome if you were able to access yours to continue to do so and to add to that uh, wherever possible. I am just gonna share my screen now, and I'd like to take a moment. We, we won't be able to go through every breakout room uh, and have feedback from every breakout room, but throughout this whole thing, uh, Jeff Cantos has been listening in as the manager of the official plan. And I am hoping to, to call on you, Jeff, for just some reflections on what you've heard so far. I, I saw a very active chat during the presentations that I wasn't able to keep track of. I know you were paying close attention to that. So maybe some reflections both on your breakout room and just generally what you've heard so far. Sure, thanks, Marlies. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. So really, really quickly, we, uh, our breakout room um, had a really fruitful discussion and you know, posed to us a lot of the challenges that we're facing in terms of you know, what, what I mentioned earlier, the balance that we, we need to get into the, into the OP given the different types of challenges we're facing, right? There's the housing crisis, there's a, the, the climate change crisis, you know, and how do we get that right? And I think the conversation, you know, people don't agree with everything that everyone says, and that's okay, but, you know, tell us, well, we've heard the challenges, and it is, you know, the, the you know, I want to call it the balancing act, but it is how can we actually write policies um, that, you know, help address as many of the challenges as possible that apply to the city. And we, I also heard loud and clear that, you know, we are one big city, but we are very, the parts of the city are very different from one another and expectations and context might be different. So, you know, I take that point uh, very, you know, clearly that uh, one big city, different challenges, depending on where you sit, uh, where we're all sitting in different parts of the city. So, um, so thank you for that, the, the conversation that, you know, you, you have, um, confirmed to me and my team that our job is not easy, but we will do what we can um, to, 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 to address as many of the challenges that we're faced with. And, um, and yeah, and I, I really appreciate the time that everyone spent with us. Uh, back over to you, Marilise. 
Thanks, Jeff. Um, so, so what you will see if you open up your chat, you can see that Ying has placed in the chat the links again to all of the mural boards. So you can follow who uh, your lead facilitator was and go back into that board uh, through the chat and add any, any other further comments. Some cleanup is required on our end as the notes can be pretty fast taking. So if you've seen anything that was your own comment that needs some clarity, by all means, go in there and revise. Um, I just wanna wrap up with the last kind of pieces of information for you, for you to walk away with. Uh, we are continuing this engagement over the next two months around this phase two engagement with the intention of providing a report to city staff with the key considerations for the directions that they start to go in with these policy updates. So that information will be based on the input we get from all the stakeholder meetings, all four that we're having. We have a community leaders circle and the community leaders circle is, um, it's made up of leaders and members of key community organizations that are working on the ground with various populations, but focused on an equity and diversity lens. So the idea is, is that we can't always reach everyone we would like to, but we can reach people who are working with many of the populations that we wanna make sure we hear from and, and share that way. The community leaders circle is meeting in November and part of the focus of that conversation is to take all the input that we've gotten on these important topics and apply an equity lens of the feedback we've received, where and how can we consider and what do we need to consider related to equity in all of these conversations for the people that are living in communities all over the city and, and different geographies. We also have a public meeting on October 20th. I mentioned earlier, you're more than welcome to join us. You can find out more on the, on the project website and register there. And then we'll be looking ahead to further conversations with all of the stakeholders uh, early in the new year. So between now and then, if you wanna submit written comments, please do so. Uh, we encourage that as well. It also helps us make sure that we've captured your input properly uh, and, may, and have the correct interpretation. And I am going to wrap it up there. Uh, I encourage you all to stay in contact and thank you so much for spending the day with us. If the city team and the Dillon team can just stay on line, that would be great. And we'll just have a little wrap up conversation before we go. Great. Meredith, can I just add that our October 20th public meeting, there are two meetings, one in the afternoon and one in the evening. And so hopefully we can accommodate uh, your schedules if you can join us. Yeah, and sorry, there's a link request in the chat as well for that. Ying, if you can just put up the project website, you actually register directly on the city website at toronto.ca slash our plan. And you can register for either meeting uh, and they will be the same content at both meetings. Great. Uh, and also a question about the presentations on the website. So the presentations will be provided via email to all of the uh, with links to all of the stakeholders. Um, we're gonna to try to get up on the website what we can because we have so many versions of presentations and the AODA requirements, we wanna make sure we get everything right and get it available and accessible for people. So that may take a bit longer, which means we're gonna to try to get links to these first out to all the stakeholders uh, early and quickly so that you can have them as reference. Great, thanks, Marilyn. Thanks everyone, take care.